Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at aspects of game theory as applied to the market structure of oligopolies. And um, we will see that oligopolies, since it's a small number of large firms, uh, they do not make decisions independently. They make interdependent decisions, strategic de decisions, based on what they think their competitor may or may not do. And as a result of these firms um, keeping a close eye on their competition and making strategic decisions based on what their uh, competing, what a competing firm may or may not do, they basically start to behave like players in a game. When you play a game, you are making decisions based on what you think your opponent, your opponent may or may not do. So one way to illustrate that is through a payoff matrix, which you see illustrated here. To draw, it's very simple. It's obviously a rectangle, and we will have uh, two players. In this case, it could be, uh, or two firms. Later, I'll create some other videos illustrating the use of a firm. But in this case, we have player A at the top and player B on the left side of this box. And we only have two choices that these two players can make. They can either split or steal and this is based on a uk tv show called golden balls and i'll try to put the link to a particular episode that i usually show my students to launch our discussion on oligopolistic um, market structures and I, and I actually would recommend to watch that link that video first it's about six minutes or so and then you can continue watching this explanation of the behavior that you see um, in that last round of the show so basically in the show, um, towards the end, it's these two players and you start to uh, try to eliminate other players and at the end accumulate a certain amount of money. And in the last round, they have to either split the money or try to steal all of it. And in this particular episode, the two players arrive to just over 100,000 British pounds. I'm using US dollars, um, but they arrived to about 100,000, let's say dollars. And so there's two choices they must face. Number the first choice is they can split. And if the two players decide to split, they each get $50,000. Now the thing is, they don't know what the decision of the other player will be. They will, have to, they will have a moment to collude, to speak to each other, to convince each other to perhaps split. And then they're gonna make an independent decision, a secret decision, which they will, will reveal at the same time. And because they're making the secret decision that they will reveal at the same time, uh, it provides the opportunity for a player to steal. So if player A steals while player B splits, then player A gets $100,000 and player B gets nothing. If, let's say, player B that we see on the left side steals, they will get the $100,000 if player A splits and player A will get nothing. If both player A and player B decide to steal, they each walk away with nothing. So it's a slightly high stakes game. Now the incentive, I mean the rational choice, the best choice is for the two players to collude. And so we got, get into this idea of oligopolies and the, this conflicting incentive that they're facing. The conflicting incentive is one, they want, they have the incentive to work together and if they work together, they walk away with half of the money, in this case, 50,000, 50,000. Clearly, both sides walk away better off. And the best decision is for them to work together, to not be self-interested and to operate in their own self-interest, but to work as a team. And we've seen this in the real world, that oligopolies don't want to, com um, don't want to compete with their competitors. Competition leads to perhaps potential price wars erupting, fight over market share, and that can lead to reduction of some of these oligopolies' profit in market share. So if oligopolies decide to collude, they benefit because colluding will lead to the limit, they will limit their competition, and that will reduce uncertainties that they have regarding what their opponent or competing firm may do. Collusion being in an agreement between oligopolistic firms can be uh, these firms decide to fix prices, that all the oligop oligopolistic firms set prices high 
instead of setting off price wars between each other. So they all agree to set price high. And as a result, they can all uh, per perhaps achieve supernormal profit and sustain that supernormal profit. They may also collude to limit the supply. Um, not being able to, not forcing themselves to work so hard, they could work a little bit less, limit the supply, and create potential shortages, which keeps price high. And they can also decide to divide the market between them. Dividing market, gaining certain market share, and so they will not get in each other's way or compete for each other's market share. When you have colluding oligopolies, they essentially become a collective monopoly. And we can illustrate monopoly just with our monopoly graph, as we've already done in a previous video. And if colluding oligopolies are collectively a monopoly, then they are achieving sustained super normal profit. So we see this here, player A and player B, like two oligopolistic firms colluding, deciding to split the $100,000 so that both players get $50,000. Clearly, this is the best rational choice, right? Up in the upper left box. But unfortunately, we see that oligopolies also have the conflicting incentive to cheat. Perhaps player A and player B discuss and they decide to collectively agree to split, but then player A decides to cheat on the deal because if they know if they get away with cheating, they can grab the full $100,000 while their while their opponent gets nothing so that's a big incentive as well that can potentially break the collusion and lead to one firm cheating and the entire uh collusive agreement falling apart by cheating firms are able to grab their rivals market share which can lead to increased revenue and increased profit which we see in this particular game Player A steals, they get the full $100,000, and player B gets nothing, and vice versa. If player B decides to steal or cheat, while player A uh, ma maintains the split, then player B gets the $100,000. Um, in game theory, we also look at this idea of the dominant strategy. And the dominant strategy is um, what we call the choice that a player will make regardless of what their opponent will do. So if you are playing this game, let's say you play this game and you decide to agree with player B, you're, let's say you're player A, and you decide to agree with player B that you're both going to split. But then player B decides to steal, and they take the $100,000. If you were to play against player B again, what choice would you make? Would you keep the split? Or have you lost faith and trust in player B and regardless will choose steal? Because you'd rather have both walk away with nothing than your opponent potentially getting something. So as players play a game over time, they will learn, they will experience, and develop a particular strategy that they will choose regardless of what their opponent does. And that's what we call the dominant strategy. Whatever your opponent does, you're always going to choose this particular choice. And in this particular game, that choice will be steal. As players play this game over and over again, and as they lose trust in each other, whenever they have decided to split and one player steals, they will lose that faith. And no matter what, they will steal and steal. And they will end up in the lower right box, which we can consider the Nash equilibrium, that the collusive oligopoly will gravitate towards cheating, making both sides worse off because they are choosing the dominant strategy of cheating or stealing. Since both sides or both firms or both players are suffering by both getting nothing, that will incentivize them to go back to collusion work together so they can enter the top left box. So I'm gonna uh, have um, a couple other videos illustrating the same payoff matrix in different scenarios. Perhaps a prisoner's dilemma uh, box and perhaps looking at uh, two firms uh, deciding to um, 
collude or not to collude and so forth. But hopefully this is kind of a, a little introduction to the idea of game theory, the idea of using a payoff matrix to illustrate the conflicting incentives of collusion or cheating by oligopolistic firms. Okay, and that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, don't uh, forget to comment and uh, also don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.